Mm. How novel. That's I, I, I love that. I keep forgetting that it does a, uh, uh, the hesitation or the, the lag or whatever. So it tuned in right as we're laughing at each other. So <laughs> as people trickle in. Perfect. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to make sure that I have all my notes up. Oh, you just made it my, oh my God. You made the title my book. I did. No, no, no. That's, that's awesome. the description. Hey, Chris. Oh, that's the description. Up, okay. Yeah. That's fine. So as you people trickle in, I'm going to mention, I'm going to mention this a few dozen times. Hey, I love that Sean is here. Like as one of the first people to click in. <laughs> it's extremely intimidating. And my dear friend Joe is here, one of the most badass human beings I know. Uh, for those of you just joining us, uh, my beautiful co-host oh, again is, awesome. is uh, Mr. Forrest Hansen. And uh, big ups to his new book with his father. Oh, man. Uh, Resilient, How to Grow an Unshakable Core of Calm, Strength, and Happiness. Uh, I just bought my copy. And uh, you should, too. We put the link in the description. And Forrest, uh, as people trickle in, why don't you... Actually, let's wait a minute so you can talk for about the, it. For the record, I did not pay for this promotion. No, this not at not all. This is not a sponsored segment. Anytime... Andrew just sprung this one on me. Anytime that I mention something on this on this show, let's call it, like it's it's always going to be of my own volition. I Unless someone pays me, then it's still... It's like. All I have to say is that if somebody wants to sponsor the show, I will wear their events shirt Ditto. on the show. That's a great That's idea. Saying. That's it. Hey, Sean, you got pull, right? Go get Ben. He's got shit. Let's, <laughs> let's, I, I'm sure Ben's not above giving us money for shirts. Oh, I, either Ben, really. Yeah. I mean, pick yeah. your poison. I'll wear an Orama shirt. I'll wear a Dance Geek shirt. I'm here. And it's, hey, it's official. I'm actually going to go to Jagged Jill Orama. I'll wear a Sacramento All Swing shirt. I don't know what Shout that is. Shout out to Sean McKeever. Oh! There you go. Yeah. Sean and Court. Uh, Babak just said, done. sponsored by Rose City Swing. Done. Sponsored by Rose City Swing. I will wear your shirt next time. Okay. We're in. Hang on. I wonder if I can Trudy's do this. Trudy's here. The whole crew's here. This is going to be great. I'm going to see if I can't pull off a thing. So why don't you talk uh, about your book for a second while I'm uh, trying to be a brown nose? Oh, are you trying to be sponsored by oh. I Like It? Oh, I yeah. Think. Uh, how much might a sponsorship for the show cost? Uh, well, if it's dictated by the market, probably a firm handshake. <laughs> but uh, we'll, we'll start there and go. Oh, that, um, that was delightfully salty. Thank you. Hey, I mean, it is what it is. I, uh... Uh, so, yeah, uh, one second on the book and then we'll get out because this is not a this is not a book podcast. This is a West Coast Swing podcast. It, I will promote uh, the balls out of you. It doesn't matter. <laughs> It's great. Uh, so one second on it. I wrote it with my dad. It's based on an online program he has called the Foundations of Wellbeing. Uh, they wanted to name the book that for a while, and it sounded like it was straight out of like 1973. So I kind of angled for a title that was a little bit more modern. Um, and basically the, oh man, I'm just now seeing the Rose City graphic Damn, pop up. That right. was fantastic. The dates I love on it, it are not accurate, but uh, I love it. look what we did. It's perfect. Yeah, that's so good. <laughs> we have our first official sponsor, guys. I'm in. Um, so, okay. Uh, the, the super, super short version is that it's basically about this, um, this basic idea that bad stuff happens to you in life. And you try to control the bad stuff that happens to you, but you can't control it perfectly. What you really can control is you can control how you respond to that bad stuff. Um, and sort of the most effective way to respond to bad stuff is by growing strengths inside of yourself to make you more resilient when bad things happen to you. Um, and the book lays out like a very, very um, clear, simple way to internalize positive experiences that happen in the flow of daily life, which is kind of the core of my dad's work. My dad's a clinical psychologist. Um, he's done a lot of work with uh, neuropsychology and is just a very established person in that field. Uh, and I was super privileged to write a book with him. It was great. That's, that was probably the most eloquent I've ever heard in elevator speech. <laughs> that was solid I've never gold. I've practiced it. Yeah, I clearly. Mean, <laughs> um, I, and I think everybody in the crowd, I, with or without being in the West Coast crowd, could definitely use it. If you, I, I feel we all, we obviously all go through various things, and that sounds very much like up my alley, the way you described it. Yeah, well, thank you, man. I, yeah. I super appreciate it. I appreciate the opportunity to talk about it on the platform. And um, yeah, I'll, we'll spare you guys the love fest, Andrew and me. Oh, I will not. I, I will not. <laughs> uh, 
Yeah, like sixty percent of our interactions, Forrest and I, is usually like, "Hey, you're great at this, buddy." Well, you're great at this. Oh, yeah, it's 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 a very it's a very group positive uh, experience. So, oh man, the angry faces are already out. You see angry I'm into faces. The angry face. I see smiles. I saw one angry face. All right, I saw. It's I'm one a lot of like one bitter asshole. It's all right. No, I like it. I want. We talked about this last time, guys. The official face of this webcast. No, it's is not. The angry Hell, face. no, it's not. Don't feed into that. This is some positivity. Uh, uh, oh, in- interesting story. Uh, uh, or not? I don't know. But um, I was watching Netflix, and there's the uh, what is it? The uh, minimize or no? Um, what are the documentaries? I can't remember what it's called. Minimalists. And and just uh, they show a number of specialists, and then all of a sudden it's Forrest's dad, like in the middle oh, of that. Yeah. And I take a picture of it and I send it to him. I'm like, mm, someone looks familiar. He's like, oh yeah, he did that like five years ago. I wondered when that was yeah, going to show a up. Long time ago. It's really weird. You kind of learn about like the production timelines in this universe. Yeah, and they're totally bizarre. Like we, so the book is coming out March 27th, I think. Yeah, we finished it like eight months ago. It's just been in the can for almost a year yeah. while they work on, you know, publicizing it and building the cover. And we did about eight rounds on the cover art. Yeah. That's a story for another day, like after the book comes out, <laughs> you know, months <laughs> after the book comes out. But we did probably eight, nine rounds just on cover art. And uh, we finally landed where we landed. But um, it's a... Oh, is Brad just realizing that this is... Okay, yeah, Brad. So this is a semi-regular thing. It's not always going to have me. Uh, Andrew's going to have a rotating cast of characters, and he's going to talk about various uh, West Coast-related stuff. We did one last week. That was kind of our first one. Yeah, we're still... We're ironing the kinks out. I mean, ultimately, and I've talked to Forrest about this, that I want him to be my co-host. It just sort of depends on when everybody's available and uh, who we have and when we have to do the the stream accordingly. Like... uh, immediately after well that's not even true like 20 minutes into the first cast when it was just me uh it uh brandy messaged me and was like i want to be on that i want to talk and i here's my topic and i was like okay but her schedule having you know traveling 30 to 50 she's a little bit busy yeah and she has kids and a husband and a life and you know so we got to kind of model it to hey katie um so yeah, if you're just joining us, I'm with Forrest Hansen, and we're going to get into today's topic a little bit. Forrest just talked about his book. You can buy uh, Resilient, How to Grow an Unshakable Core of Calm, Strength, and Happiness. There's a link up top at his father, Rick Hansen's uh, website. And even if you don't buy it, which I highly recommend you do, check out um, anything that Rick Hansen is involved in. Uh, he's a, he's a, this amazing voice of wisdom in my life. It's, it's incredible. That's if, just about the nicest thing anyone's ever said about us. I well, like it. It's the truth, man. And even though, like, the last... Because I haven't seen your dad in forever regularly. The last time mm-hmm. I saw him... Um, last time I saw him was uh, at ben, at um, Swingtacular. And he totally didn't remember me. But he's so polite. He just let the social contract go through. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds very like my dad. Yeah. Uh, it's like, oh, my God, memory, Rick, it's so good to see you. Yeah. yeah. It's, I was like, it's so good to see you, Rick. He's like... Uh, yeah, it's very, very good to see you too. Okay, I'm gonna go inside. It's like, okay, that's great. Oh Shanti. man, um, yeah. So Shanti just mentioned something that it sounded like you would just wanted to to speak to. Oh, just I agree. Uh, women's voices on our show. I support this. Yes, please. Uh, yeah. Obviously, that's... we're two dudes, but it's not always gonna just be two dudes. No, not at so. all. Uh, yeah. Okay. So okay. Do you want to start? No, I, I, you're the, you're the host here, man. I'm just, I'm okay. just the hired talent. <laughs> then I'll give you a prompt. So, uh, I asked this week, I've been asking a lot of questions of people and, and there's plenty of you who have been responding. So thank you so much for that. Uh, and Alan from Seattle, Alan, uh, wrote, cust- he wanted to talk about customary behaviors and how do we as communities and instructors do a better job of teaching these customs to new dancers and what are these customs? Uh, I think that's an easy, easy place to start. So yeah, what are our customs? Like, I don't think I've ever, other than like the cliche, like, oh, we get drunk and we stay up late. Like, what is, <laughs> what would you consider our customs? Um, it's an interesting question. I'm not sure that I thought about it too deeply because I sort of approached this question maybe from, like, I sort of just thought about it a different way, which is like, how do you, um, 
I don't know what the what the right word is for this, but like, how do you indoctrinate people into a new community, right? Yeah. Like, that's that's kind of what we're asking here, really. Is Pretty we're asking, much. we sort of have this way that we approach each other. We're kind to each other. We ask each other to dance. As you said, we hang out late, whatever it might be. How do you kind of go about teaching those customs to people where you you can onboard them really smoothly into yeah. West Coast Swing um, and make them feel kind of comfortable and welcomed and um, confident in the stance? while also understanding that there are these things that like maybe you shouldn't do so much. Um, I'm not sure if I've, I, I think that most of that happens at the local dance level. Um, I know f- for myself that I first started doing West Coast Swing at WNY at the warehouse yeah. um, up in Nevada. And which I hear is closing. I learned. Yeah, well, kind of. It's moving. Um, oh, okay. So it's moving to a new location, which ironically is actually my old ballroom studio at Dance Arts in downtown San Rafael, oh. um, which is hilarious for me because it's very much like this full circle experience. I haven't been there in like a couple of years, and that's where I started training and all yep. of that. Um, but so I learned all those conventions at uh, at W&Y at the, at the warehouse. And so that for me was like how I understood, oh, okay, here's how we ask each other to dance in this. And for the record, I'm still really bad at asking people to dance. Yeah, me too. Um, yeah, I, I will never forget about Dance Arts, Haley. That's, <laughs> you know, that was that was OG. So Haley Minkin, um, I taught her first dance lesson ever sure. when she was like 12 or 13 years old. And I was 18 at Dance Arts. And she has never let me forget about it. <laughs> So there you go. But yeah, I, I don't know. So I think that we generally do that at the local level. And so this question is just kind of about how do we get good at that locally? Well, I don't know if you have a thought on that. Well, uh, I have plenty. I mean, but um, let anyway. me ask, before we get into that, like, what was your experience when you started? You know, like well, what, what super... brought you in? Mm-hmm. Because I, I got onboarded by my sister. And oh, yeah. um, so my sister, Laurel Hanson, she started doing West Coast before me. And we had two really good friends that I've actually known since middle school, uh, Kirsty and Caitlin Lawson. Yeah. And they were both very advanced dancers at the time when I started. And uh, so they kind of broke me out of my ballroom dance shell and uh, kind of indoctrinated me very smoothly into West Coast Swing. And really the second or third time that I went, I just made a lot of really good friends. I met uh, Jacob Purnell. I don't know if you remember Jacob from back in the day. I think he's living in L.A. right now. Um, Shanti, I knew Shanti. Uh, very, very well um, from the ballroom days. And she kind of, she was my first Strictly ever. Like she really um, introduced me to the dance in a lot of ways. Uh, Sharon Her, Ellen Brady. The point is that I had all these really good friends who immediately made me feel welcome and like part of the social scene. And I don't think that everybody gets that. Um, And I was very lucky that way. And that wasn't so much about like an element of my character or something. It was just it was just good luck. It was that I had a background in another dance. I had friends and they brought me in. So how can we create that experience for people who are brand new to the dance? I don't know. Um, I think it's a really interesting. Well, I question, think you though. said it, actually, like, <laughs> you know, you had friends who brought you in. You need like having that social. We talked about this last week, and I think it's probably going to come up every fucking time is that you need that social aspect for this community like it's a social dance right you need someone Mm -hmm. to extend the olive branch or whatever you want to say to actually bring you in and we believe it or not had this um this get together the other day it was uh the small group of us um here in portland to talk specifically about this because it's an issue like you know scenes will stagnate when you don't bring the social into it and it's you asked a question before we even started, like basically, why do I gravitate towards other scenes? Why have I been in and out of the scene, essentially? And that is one of the biggest things is I have never been so um, well taken care of mm. as this one type of group in the West Coast scene. But that was years ago and it went away. So that being my initial draw, losing that um, through my faults or whatever circumstance that really turned me off for a while. And I was immediately, when I tried to get back as a jazz dancer after like a 10 year hiatus, they embraced me, you know, mm, felt mm-hmm. like a family again. And this thing that I had missed in the West Coast crowd forever. And, you know, we, we hang out, but there's no pretense. It's just, it's very easy, like the old days. So mm-hmm. for me, I think like, it's really ridiculously difficult to tell somebody to go be a friend to a rando. Yeah, for um, sure. 
but if you, at the very least, I think if you see promise in somebody, like whether that's they seem like a nice person, they seem fun, or they are very interested in the dance, whatever stands out to them, latch on to that. Because you remember um, during the Wine About It session, the, yeah. De Deborah's whole story about when she met John Festa. And uh, that that's essentially what she was saying is like, it's the job. If you want this community to get better, it's your job to come and bring me in because I'm a good dancer or because I'm interested. Yeah, for sure. And I think that there are kind of two different things that you pointed to there. The first thing that you pointed to is that there are kind of two big questions for West Coast Swing, like from a longevity standpoint. Yeah. It's how do you welcome in new people and how do you keep old people interested? Yeah. How do you keep people who have been dancing for six or seven years interested in the dance and excited by the dance? Um, and I think that at both ends of that spectrum, there are really, really interesting questions for us as a community. And can you do both of those things simultaneously? Can you um, stop complexity creep at like the high oh, end? Because, yeah. you know, complexity is often what attracts people who have been to it for six or seven or eight years. But it scares off people who are brand new. Yeah. So how do you kind of manage that balance? And then the second thing that you mentioned was about uh, good dancers and other styles. And I think that Andrew's kind of pointing to this in his comment in the thread. Um, I think that we were kind of mixed at bringing in good dancers from other styles. Because on the one hand, people like dancing with good dancers. And if you have a feeling of training in your body, you're more likely to feel good in a West Coast Zone context. Yeah, no question. Um, at the same time, there's this whole conversation in the scene right now about how not west coast is too not what west coast if that kind of makes sense yeah. like how how much zook is too much zook how much ballroom is too much ballroom how much you know whatever is too much whatever yeah and i think there are ways in which that conversation sometimes um makes us push really good dancers from other styles kind of into the west coast box a little bit yeah and um occasionally probably to the detriment yeah, I agree. I mean, like, that's a whole, the style conversation is like a whole fucking hour, two hour topic. Sure, like, yeah. And yeah, Pete, yeah. Pete Green joined the, the chat a second ago. Hey, Pete Green. Um, and Pete has always been like this huge inspiration for me because I felt like, and Pete, if you are listening, it's always been this, I never felt like you sacrificed whatever dance you were doing, but you never looked like everybody else. And that's enormous mm -hmm. to me. Like, Pete is one of the most unique motherfuckers I've ever seen. And, It'd be interesting to get like you and me and him and like, like Sean McKeever, you know, somebody like like four very different ways of doing this dance or like, like I would love to get Shanti or Brandy or like name your favorite. Deborah. Yeah. Deborah. Yeah. Deborah. Oh my God. Um, and just get like a, maybe like a round table discussion about their personal style just to kind of feed into it a little bit, not critiquing anybody, not anything, just like. Let's talk about why you do your and, thing. And how do you maintain that style yeah. while still being true to, like, quote-unquote, West Coast Swing, whatever yeah. whatever we define that as meaning? Um, I think that that's a really interesting question. I agree. And I think we're a little off topic now, so let's try to – let's. Yeah, we, we're sort of wandered. It's going to happen. I mean – but um, let's go back. So Katrina Blackwell said, I like that our club has started using wristbands for new dancers to encourage everyone to ask them to dance, make them feel welcome. I'm not sure how the new people feel about being called out like that. But I love that we're encouraging everyone to help. Yeah, I like the encouragement. I don't like labeling anybody uh, because there is all the chance in the world that somebody looks at your wristband and is like, oh, no. But then again, if somebody's going to look at a wristband and say, I don't want to dance with them, yeah, that's... they are a pile of douche. And uh, yeah. Yeah, I mean, so for me with that kind of a thing, I'd... my experience in general with doing some sort of new dancer labeling for lack of a better way of putting it, um, has in general been pretty positive because Sweet. what it does is it is it protects both groups of people, right? Because <laughs> for the for the beginners, it gives people an opportunity to approach them and be welcoming and all of that. And then for the subset of people who don't want to dance with a beginner for whatever reason, which I don't really support, but okay, I understand, yeah. um, it kind of protects them as well. And it, and more importantly, it protects the beginners from the people who don't want to dance with beginners. Yeah. Like, that's the most important element, right? Because to your point, every no community is perfect. Much as we would like to think that my community is perfectly welcoming and, and perfectly kind and all of that good shit, that's just not the way that it happens in the world. Um, so you need to create some kind of tacit 
protection for younger, newer dancers. Um, and also, I think that it, it helps new dancers find each other because you gravitate towards your peers. Like we, we would like to, yeah, we would like to sort of pretend that, you know, every all star is going to want to dance with every novice dancer. Every champion is going to want to dance with every novice dancer. But the champion dancers hang out together, not because they're all douchebags and they just only want to hang out with good dancers. It's because they've known each other for like 15 years. Yeah. OK, of course, you hang out with your friends. Like There's yeah. nothing wrong with that. Um and I do think we got to kind of get over that as a community that like, oh, the champs only hang out with the other champs and this is so bad. No, you hang out with your friends. Yeah. So it's good for us to create opportunities for new dancers to find their peer group, right? So that's why I would kind of lean towards having some form of identification for somebody who's newer. Okay. Um, for me, the most like natural and holistic version of that is that you kind of have a buddy and that buddy introduces you to people and then you just kind of call it a day at that point. Um, but having a wristband or something like that is probably not the worst idea. Okay. Yeah. I, when you put it like that and with the comments that people are making, I definitely see the, the pros and especially those who have said that it's basically working. You know, yeah, if you have sure. evidence in front of you, it's not something I can, I would want to stand against. Sure. Um, so there, let's move on a little bit to the next part of Alan's question. Uh, Cause we're talking about customs. We're talking about like things we can do. Um, you like uh, Stephen White and a number of other people. Um, Mel Smith from Bend mentioned this: how to appropriately ask and decline, how to handle rejection. There was a lot of talk about, um, you know, it's still really affecting your self-esteem, and like you feel obligated to do various things. It's hard to talk to people who might be higher up. Um, you know, we do have an established hierarchy in this dance, just because we're so competition-oriented. And how do you deal with that? With feeling comfortable interacting with like more advanced dancers, yeah, I guess. Or... Do you experience that sort mm -hmm. of that? Uh, I don't. I, I hesitate to call it a negative aspect. That self. -con do you ever get self conscious? Do you ever feel weird around somebody who may have just like whipped ass in a competition? Is it or is it more of a social anxiety thing? Um. Yeah, I mean, I, I would say that. Some of this is temperamental, right? Like sure. there are going to be people who are who are sort of more um, more susceptible to feeling dismissed than other people, and I think that you know, for better or worse, and there's so there's this. Okay, I you did the book promo earlier. Let we let's just do this thing. So there's this concept in psychology <laughs> called narcissistic <laughs> supplies. Okay, and that sounds bad because we look at the word narcissism and we think that narcissism is a bad thing and narcissism is a bad thing but narcissistic supplies are essentially good and normal and what those are those are the supplies that a person has inside of themselves that say i am a good person yeah. at some fundamental level and um different people have different tendencies towards having a lot of them or having a little of them and if you have a little of them you can develop them if you have a lot of them you can increase your consciousness of that you have a lot of them and how that might be affecting your behavior, okay? If you tend to be somebody who has more of like a kind of a, a, a core of those supplies, then you're going to be less susceptible to feeling dismissed. Yeah. Um, so kind of the first step is to understand that you have a vulnerability, that this is a thing for you. Yeah. And then how do you go about kind of interacting with that thing? For me, I tended to be somebody who had sort of felt more resourced in that way. So I was less worried about that. That being said, yeah, I still get nervous talking to a lot of these people. And these are people that I've been talking to for, for five or six years at this point, right? Yeah. Like I still get nervous sometimes when I'm talking to to Kyle or Benji or... Um, or Deborah, God, Deborah's like a good friend. And there are times when I'm like standing with her at a bar or something. And I'm like, Jesus Christ, I'm just chilling with Deborah Seke right now. That's pretty dope. Right? Like that's a, uh, I, I don't think that that feeling ever goes away. And a big part of the question is like, how do you manage that feeling? Right. Yeah. So, so yeah, I think that that's just a part of the human experience to be perfectly honest. Like sure. we, so we, let's, let's go with yeah. that then. How do you manage that? Oh, you know, lots of alcohol. Um, cool. no, yeah. I mean, we, we were aside. talking about community. I mean, and, uh... 
<laughs> oh man. So joking joking aside, um I manage that by oh uh, Joel, you're so nice. Oh good, Brad and Joel dropping in the I get nervous about you. Oh come on guys. <laughs> um so anyways, uh I feel like I you're sw- seeing work- comments that I'm not. <laughs> Well, I, I'm just I'm just plugged in, man. I'm I'm a man of the people. What, what can I say? Pain in the ass. Okay. Um, so, anyways, uh, I start. I, I try to manage that by, for one, having good friends, and that's easier said than done. Right. But there are a lot of people that I know that if I feel shitty about myself for whatever reason, I can just go and stand next to them and hang out with them, and I'll probably end up like feeling some good feelings. Like Brad. Brad is a great example of this. Brad is, like, so deeply internally resourced. Like, if you, <laughs> if you hang out with Brad, Brad is going to make make it feel like, A, he's the coolest person in the world, and B, you're the coolest person in the world, too. Yeah. And that's what's really wonderful about Brad. So, like, if I'm ever feeling um, iffy at a convention, if something shitty just happened, if, like, I if I'm having a bad night or whatever, I'll be like... Where's Brad? Because yeah. I want to have a great night, and yeah. he's going to make that happen. Um, so, and, and there are people like that. There are kind of signpost people. Um, I wouldn't say, like, you have obviously a very, very different temperament than Brad. But if you're at an event, and you're standing in a corner, and I want somebody to kind of help recenter myself to a certain extent, um, I'm going to go and hang out with you and talk to you, and we're going to end up shooting the shit, and I'm going to feel great at the end of that conversation. You know, so like having those signpost people that just made the heart is, flutter. That's, that's oh for cool. sure, it's deeply true. Having those signpost people, whoever that is for you. So like, think to yourself for a person if you're at an event, find your people. Yeah, find your one person, your two people, your five people. It doesn't have to be 500 people. I think that we have this kind of false narrative with West Coast Swing, yeah, where you have to like like everyone at the convention. Well, and then you what, what you're talking about too coincides with just society in general. That seeking of yeah. fame. Find your people. Yeah, I mean, we're a tribal people. We have been forever. Like, and, and you ever, it, 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 I look into this a lot more because I am such a fucking introvert. But mm-hmm. like, when I go to a convention, when I get out of a convention, I need to like. Actually, let's talk about in convention because I can't be around in the ballroom twenty four seven. It drives me crazy. Like, yeah, there's just sure. too many people. So I try not like I try to make sure that people know that I'm not being rude when I just like I can't dance right now. I'm gonna go up. I'm gonna hang with Forrest, and, you know, with our people, sure. with a small group, with Brad, etc. Um, and that's how I recharge. It's because I want to give as much as I can to the people around me. And if I'm just constantly being pulled in every direction. It's it's just too much for me. And at the same time, I feel that the average person tries to give of themselves too much. And then they wonder why they're so exhausted or why these people aren't reciprocating in the way that they are. You know, shotgun blast is great for various things, but I, I find it tends to not, uh, at least for me, it doesn't give me it gives me diminished returns. Yeah, no, totally. And yeah, that makes total sense. And I think that if like more look, um, Joel asked a great question that I want yeah. to get to in a second. But uh, we are two points simultaneously. First point, um, West Coast Swing is almost nobody's first dance. We are kind of a community of of weirdos yeah. in our own little way. And I say that with total love in my heart. We're all people, or in general, we're people who started in a different dance or they started in a different thing and they kind of wandered to West Coast Swing over time. There are like four people in the world who grew up wanting to be a West Coast Swing dancer, right? Like yeah. it's a very, very small group of people. Everyone else came from somewhere else. Yeah. Um, so we have that shared bond for starters. Um, Joel asked a good question, which is what happens if you don't have like that person that you yeah. can rely on? Uh, if you don't have that person you can rely on, you're probably not going to last for very long in this community. And here's what I mean by that. Um, everyone, if you don't connect with anyone socially here, it doesn't really matter how much you love the dance. You're probably not going to stick around for very yeah. long. Like as you were talking about, it's a social dance. If you are aspiring to be part of the social community, then you're going to find those people over time. How do you get good at finding those people? I think that that loops back to what you were saying in the beginning, Andrew, which was how do we onboard people better? Yeah. How do we interact with new people better? And so I think or I hope that like local communities could do a better job of helping people find their their squad, for lack of a better way of putting yeah. it. Does that kind of make sense? Oh, for sure. But, uh, for me, yeah. it's I feel like because I've been through so many partner dance scenes 
and, and you know, you come from a different one as well, obviously, like you were saying, and it's, it, we're not taught how to be people, if that makes any sense. Like the social skills that you need to survive as a human being are often, I feel, forgotten or maybe neglected by the average person when they come into, especially the West Coast scene, because it's such a weird amalgam of folk. It's such a weird, weird um, amalgam of styles and, and cultural clash and everything. Um, Ninety percent of the classes that I teach now are like eye contact and paying attention and breath and like essentially how to be a functioning, effective human rather than this is how you hold your center when you do, a, you know, a quad. And we forget that a lot. And it, it sometimes it's just you have to remember that it's your responsibility. Again, in my opinion, more so than I hope someone takes me under their wing. You know, I, like I want to be in this crowd. I got I better make some friends. Or for me, what really worked is I was a good dancer. Like I had the luck of uh, thanks, Pete, for joining us. Have a great day. Um, I was I was a good dancer at something else. So I was able to use my skills to climb the socioeconomic ladder. You know, that's what got me friends is people were like, yeah. hey, you you're pretty good at this. I was like, I'm not, but I'm faking very well. Hi, I'm Andrew, you know. So you, you use whatever your strength is, whether that's like like Joel, for example, is one of the nicest people that I've ever met. He's got that energy behind him. I know I'm going to have, like you're saying about Brad, I know I'm going to have a good time if I'm watching Joel. I probably want to get to know this guy. You yeah, know? sure. It's just whatever your, your peacock is, uh, use that to your advantage. Um, Heidi Dizelle from uh, Seattle is one of my favorite examples. Uh, because a she I think she's a great dancer, but more than anything, she will go up to anybody if they look like they're having a down day and she will make you feel like a million bucks. She'll just oh, have a, sure. a beautiful conversation with you and yeah. you'll end up saying shit that you never thought you would say. It's just it's it's amazing. Yeah, like Shanti's saying, shine your light, give rather than constantly seek to get, you know, uh, what does Jen say? How can local communities facilitate? This is a good question for you. I think you're it's better. A, it's a great question. We kind of talked about it a little bit at the very beginning. Okay. Um, and I think that it sort of dovetails with what you were saying before, Andrew, which is that that importance of um, viewing a dance community as a social community and trying to do things to teach people those sort of basic interactive skills. Even more than that, if you're a local dance, don't think about yourself as a local dance. Yeah. Okay. So this is sort of out there, but think about yourself as like a community organization that happens to teach dancing. Yeah. Okay. So you want to have really, really good teachers. What do you also want to have in a good community organization? You want to have fun people. You want to bring in people with different skill sets. Okay. So I think that for me, more dances, more local dances could hire more people who are just good at the social aspects. Yeah. You don't have to be a good dancer to have valuable stuff to give. Yeah to a local community, right? So like the warehouse is really, really good at this. Um, yeah, uh, sorry, I just got distracted for a second by Joel's comment, which yeah, is an I interesting one. Um, so I think that like for me, just doing social stuff, doing like have a barbecue, yeah. have a movie night, have a whatever, put things, intentionally insert things into the kind of fabric of your dance community that are purely social stuff where you hang out with people outside of the dancing. Yeah. Yeah. A consistent sense of family that you can build. And for me, I think that that's something that could really help a lot of groups. And there are some communities that are good at that. And there are some communities that are less good at that. Yeah. You know, that's okay. And also kind of like, for me, it's, it's helpful to remember your station in it. Is this a hobby? Is this something, well, is this just like a thing you do or has it progressed into a hobby, something that you have passion behind? Like remind yourself of how valuable it is to you, because if you're just somebody who mm -hmm. comes out occasionally, you know, and you aren't really investing in the scene, don't rest your hopes on it being your 100 percent social outlet. And, you know, don't sure. expect to be taken in. But if you're somebody who comes out consistently and you're still feeling like maybe I haven't broken in, I mean, def or if you're wondering how to bring those people in, definitely hot, like uh, barbecue and pool party and hit the movies and I don't know, orgy. I'm sure that helps people. And like <laughs> it helped us. I'm just saying. <laughs> that was a or was that a right left turn? turn? I don't know. Oh, it was a right so turn. It, okay. it was it was a right turn or a left turn. It was a turn somewhere. Okay, yeah. Anyways. 
recentering. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Heidi's holiday part. Heidi Heidi Dazil has a holiday party that she throws. It's it's all about the community. She makes a huge mess of food. I mean, and that's again, that's one of the things that draws me so much to jazz and to hip hop is like, that's what you do is because these dances like we're speaking personally. I'm a poor guy. Like I, I'm a dan I am an artist for a living now, and that's mm -hmm. tough. So in order to get, frankly, in order to get a lot of like training in, and in order to get um, food, we all pool our money, get together, and we have we cook for each other and yeah uh <laughs> let's move on i think i derailed yeah it's, well no there are just there's some some comments that i'm not going to restate but Sign you, know, me you, up. Can read like, the, you can read the comments if you i like want that bella to. joined after that so that's what <laughs> yeah it was perfect timing that's um awesome. anyways yeah so like if people are naming some things in the chat that are good examples of this like you're exactly what you just named heidi's holiday party heidi throws a holiday party every year it's amazing um, it's a big elaborate thing. It doesn't have to be a big elaborate yeah. thing, but she makes it this big elaborate thing. Yeah. Um, at the warehouse, we do uh, sleepovers, or we had in the past done a lot of sleepovers, That's and cool. Raymond's hosted a lot of those. I know that um, other places have their version, like watch parties. Watch parties watch are a parties perfect are example. I love them. Yeah, because because they blend the two things, right? Because they, they have the dancing, and they also have the everything else. And so you have this like multiple verticals to connect with people on. If you really like talking dance with somebody, but like they're not necessarily your soulmate, that's okay. If you really like <laughs> hanging out with somebody, but like you may or may not care for their dancing, that's okay. It all kind of comes together at a watch party. So yeah. like the next time that, I don't know, Swing Diego or Mad Jam or the US Open or whatever is going on, host a watch party. Yeah. Think about doing something that's like community organized in that way. Well, and I have to give a shout out to uh... Bubak Shakiri, because that's he's the jam here in Portland. Like he, he, there's others doing stuff, but like as he is one of our sponsors today, uh, he, <laughs> <laughs> he uh, he really does this incredible job of getting people together, and like it's it's his crowd. It's important to him. So he just a shout out to Bobak for doing the right stuff, in my opinion. Uh, let's yeah. let's move on a little bit. Um, sure. Let's see here. There's uh, use deodorant but not cologne, says Alan. <laughs> Should I stock that pro over there or not? Actually, let's talk about that for just a split second. Should I okay. stock that pro over there or not? You um, probably should. I agree. I mean, that's. I mean, but there's did a thing. Settle that right there. There's a thing. Don't stock them. If you want to get better, ask them and then accept that they're human, and that they have shit to do. Yeah, sure. Great. I'm I mean, glad. I think that like the just to have like a one second comment on that, because sure. I don't think that, that needs like an extended comment, no, but like right. one second. Um, pros are people. Yeah. So not to not to be Captain Obvious over here, but pros are humans, too. And they want friends, too. And they want to hang out with their friends, too. And they want to have good dances, too. Yeah. And I think that we do this weird thing um, in West Coast communities where we assume that somebody is hired for the event. And therefore, we all kind of have collective ownership of them. And yeah. that's just not how it works. A an event hires a professional for a very, very specific and bounded contract. They're hired to teach a set number of workshops, judge a set number of sessions, DJ if they're DJing. <clears throat> and then um, perform, yeah. you know, or compete. They're not generally hired to social dance. Social dancing is generally not in contracts. Occasionally but it, it is, but you would be generally it's not. You would be shocked at the amount of contracts that has shown up in. Yes, and that's the thing, is that once we're contracting people to social dance, we're really kind of crossing the streams in a sort of awkward way. Um, yeah. And I think that it would just be kind of nice as a community if we conceded that these people are dancing 40 weekends a year yeah. and their interaction with a West Coast Swing event is not the same as your interaction with a West Coast Swing event, which yeah. for most of the people who go is their happy, fun time vacation. Yeah. And those two goals, my work and your happy, fun time vacation do not always like connect with each other in nice ways, right? Yeah. So just like try to have a little bit more consciousness about that before rolling up to your whatever, your average pro and assuming that they're gonna want to dance with you. Yeah, I mean, assuming anything in life is kind of a downfall, you know? Yeah, for ha sure. Have the conversation. Like that's kind of my, 
it's just the go-to phrase for me for pretty much everything of how to keep balanced. You know, don't assume and just be willing to talk about it beforehand. It'll save you years in many things. Uh, is it acceptable to dance drunk? This is a really, um, this is a, a tricky one. This could go uh, so This could go a so lot of different deeper. directions. Uh, yeah, um, I don't know if you have any thoughts on this. Of course I do. I have thoughts on all this shit. Uh, uh, all right. First well, of all, like I, I missed Shanti's comment. I, I yeah. clicked the love button, but I didn't mention it. Uh, she says, don't grab their hand before asking the dance or allowing them to answer. That's the, kind of the same thing. That weird, like, thing that happens, that, that flip of the hand or, like, I feel like it, it happens to me with follows, but it definitely happens more with, with leads to follows, uh, at least from what I can see. Just don't do that. You know, use your words. We're human. We developed a language. It's only polite. And to assume that you're, you know, entitled to anything from this person is extremely uncomfortable. Yeah, for sure. Uh, so anyway, the, the drunk thing, um, we all, uh, most of us enjoy a drink or two at these conventions at the very least. And so you can assume that, especially at late night, people are probably at least a little buzzed. But there's a difference between where it goes from like, you are buzzed and still have your faculty. It's like, again, it's like being a decent human being. If you are consistently going beyond the point of self-control and your conduct is massively changing or you're making other people uncomfortable, knock it off. Change your, your habits. You are not the only person in the world. You do not have the right to monopolize another person's um, universe. You know? And I say that like being surrounded by alcoholics growing up, like not not the fun, jaunty, we just had a great weekend alcoholic, like the fallen down, I'm threatening to kill myself and the police are coming alcoholics. Like that's, there is no question in my mind. Like if you are affecting another person negatively, you need to change what the fuck you're doing. And this is actually sure, a yeah. really big issue in our crowd. And it yeah, has been for no, a while. I, I think it is. Yeah, um, I mean, I think that like the party, at, <clears throat> excuse me, the, the party atmosphere of West Coast events is kind of this whole other ball of wax that we yeah. don't necessarily have to get into right now. Yeah, it's a whole um, other thing. Yeah, it's it's a whole other question. It's just kind of how like how do we want to orient different events, and different events are kind of good for different things, and it's good to sort of know what you're signing up for. Yeah, for sure. is sort of my one second approach of that whole big ugly topic. Um, yeah. With regards to like drinking and or smoking or whatever it is that you're doing while you're dancing, um, I so here's my thing: I don't drink before I compete ever under any yeah, circumstances. I compete a hundred percent sober. And here, there are two reasons for this. For one, I think that I'm a better dancer sober. Two, I don't get to get the consent of my partner. Yep. And that's like a huge freaking deal that I wish that more people realize. Like, I get it if you're really nervous going into a dance. Um, I, I really do, but I have not signed up to dance with you at a Jack and show. Yeah. So if you are shwasted and you roll out onto <laughs> the contest floor in a Jack and Jill contest, you are essentially assuming that your partner wants to dance with your drunk ass self. Yeah. And guess what kids? I generally don't, yeah. particularly not in a competitive environment where frankly, I'm trying to do well most of the time. Like yeah. I'm a competitive dude. I'm I'm there because I love it and because I'm happy and because I really, really, really enjoy competing. But I don't necessarily want to drag your ass around the floor with 400 people watching. Truth. Um, and I would say that actually even more so as a follow, I would not want to dance with a wasted dude. Oh, hell no. Like that is a, that is a straight up safety and security risk. Well, it goes and... both ways, man. I've had to mm -hmm. think, I've had plenty of follows. This is, that's actually why I don't dance with, that's why I don't follow is that one mm. fear of this guy's not going to mm -hmm. know what he's doing anyway. Never mind if he's hammered, sure, but especially yeah. if you're in a competition, uh, like that telltale smell comes out and you're like, Oh, here we go. And then a, the follow drops into whatever they're doing. Cause you just don't have the facility to control yourself. Sure. Like yeah. what is it? Robert, this is a separate topic, but like, even when you're fully, you have your faculties with you. Robert Royston like separated his bicep a long time ago in a dance because there was just a rando move that popped out. It happens. People get hurt. Yeah. So like minimize the, the opportunity for, for injury and failure. 
Yeah, basically. So like, you know, give yourself the best chance to succeed. Give your partner the best chance to succeed. Look, if you have to have a drink or half a drink before you walk out on the floor in order to, you know, just like calm yourself to a point where you're not going to freak out. Sure. Okay. That that's sort of one thing. But going out like actually inebriated is not a good look in a competitive setting, basically under any circumstances. Yeah. If it's a strictly and you've talked with your partner about it and it's all good and you're just there to have kind of a, a, a good old fun time, all right. That's that's between you and your partner. Do your thing. Yeah. But don't bring me into it. Yeah. So. And that's – I mean that's – all these topics keep echoing kind of the same idea is like how – basically how are you with another human being? Are you treating them well or is it all about you? Yeah. Among other things. But um, so from that, I I posted a question that was, uh, what would make you feel supported in your scene and at conventions? And I know it's pretty much what we've been talking about this entire time. Uh, yeah. Also, uh, we're starting to near the end of the show. So if uh, anybody has any questions they want to ask, please feel free to shoot it out there. That's kind of the last 10 minutes are sort of um, reserved for that. Daniel Martin Daniel Martinez. Hi, Daniel Martinez is one of the most talented dancers I've ever met. Uh, that's right. awesome. Very good conversation. We need to get in touch because I never felt more like belonging to this and I'm going to do my best to carry on. Carry. I love you. You're just, what a wonderful human. Uh, Daniel is also one of the most um, improved dancers within a short amount of time. This guy's like, mm. his growth potential is like straight out of anime. It doesn't even make any sense. Within like three months, um, he went from like straight ball from like from like a salsa dancer Latin ballroom to like doing a f and not getting a split at all to a full split complex pirouette combos and like a lyrical dancer like he's a monster. Uh, so anyway, so would you describe his power level as being over nine thousand? Oh, for sure, it is over nine thousand. Uh. <laughs> Sorry, I, I like how Tony joined right after we did that. That's perfect timing. That's this great. This whole stream, you mentioned like positive feminism and Shanti shows up. You mentioned anime and Tony's here. It's the best. I mentioned, I, if you mention getting swole, Nick King will pop in. I'm telling you. It's true. The, the biceps will just be too much for us to deal with. Um, too much. Uh, so Rosie Ann's asked, a, asked a question that honestly oh. I feel unequipped to answer. Um, because I am a leader and I'm not a follower and I, or I should say in this context, actually it's appropriate. I'm a guy and can guys be touched in appropriate ways? Absolutely. But I, I suspect the that time, you're, actually. you're, yeah, frequently, but I, I suspect that your experience would be better answered by a, a woman who's had sort of a similar experience with that and has experienced sort of a similar power dynamic to that. And I agree. whenever you get into like gendered conversations, the language gets really tricky. I lost the video. I lost the video. Yeah, I know. We're fixing it. Hang on a minute. Uh, blah, 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 blah. We're back. We're back. We're, we're back. We're alive. Uh, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Sure? I can hear myself. We're, we're definitely back. Okay. I think we're back. Yeah. Okay. All right. We're back. We're good. We're in. Oh, wait, wait. Stay. Shit. Are we, are we good? We, yes, it should be. We're in. We should be good. I hope people show back up. Okay, I think we're back in it. Uh, sure. Are you posting like, hey, we're still here? Yeah, I'm, I'm trying to... I think what we're going to do next there. time is because I don't really like it either, but the... Um, yeah, I don't know why it keeps doing this. This is Facebook. This is just like, that's their, their hosting algorithm. It's just not perfect. Mm. Um, they like to switch it up every time, and it's a whole thing, but... YouTube's is actually okay, um, and I really just want people to suck it up and get on Twitch. Okay, so we're we're back up to like twenty two people watching. I then think let's have this conversation. Yeah. So okay, cool, we're good, great. Um, so uh, Rosie's comment, just to recap, uh, how do you deal with somebody who touches you in an inappropriate way? Yeah. Um, there is a long conversation around that, and there's a short conversation around that. Uh, the the first and simple and most obvious thing to do is to inform them that they're touching you in an inappropriate way. And I understand that that can be a very awkward conversation to have with somebody and a very uncomfortable conversation to have with somebody. But I think that you you kind of have to do it from both a human level yeah. and from a and not to drag it in, but from a legal level. Like your first job is to inform somebody 
that they're doing something that's inappropriate. Um, your second step is to probably talk to the people running that dance if it's a persistent problem. Yeah. And there have been instances in the past of um, there have been instances in the past of people being removed from the community because they just hit critical mass of people who felt uncomfortable with them. So. Yeah. I'm getting some people saying it's still frozen. Okay, for whatever this is reason. what we're going to do. Um, I'm going to end the broadcast. We're going to restart the broadcast. Oh, really? Or, okay, I think that we're trucking. We got 23 people. Oh, no, it's we're getting a lot of people saying still not working. I'm going to end the broadcast. Will you, will you um, post a thing really quick, and then we'll just restart it? Okay, give me one sec. It's not just uh, Phoenix Gray, if you can hear me. It's not just the app today. Uh, Facebook can eat a bag of crap. Uh, yeah, do the thing. Hang on. Yeah, everyone, everyone. Yeah. Hang yeah, on. I, I think that it's actually working for a lot of people. It's just that there are people who haven't actually like either fully restarted it or yeah. Sorry for the typing. I have a mechanical keyboard. Oh, I love the sound. It's I so bad. Good. It's so good. I just yeah, got a I, message. I Hang on. Pretty briskly. Okay, so is it working for folk? It seems to be working. All right, let's just let's just leave it alone. Oh, for like it sake. says that there are twenty five people watching. Okay, let's just because we only have like fifteen minutes anyways. Let's just kind of run it through here and make it happen. Okay, so does that seem good? Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm getting a lot yeah, of people we've, saying we've it's got eight okay, minutes cool. basically left in the show. Hopefully, you can at least hear us. It's working for yeah, me. It restarted. We're good. It's working. We're, for I'm me. hearing it's a lot of it's working. Great. Okay, fantastic. Um, so, uh, we just kind of tried to wade through that little interpersonal interaction minefield. And I think that it would be great to have somebody on, um, who, who could speak to that and to have an episode specifically about that topic, which I is agree. definitely a major topic in, in any dance community. So I think that maybe that we'll kind of save that one for a rainy day. Yeah. I mean, to, the, the short of it is we're in such a small close-knit crew of people like i say this a lot but worldwide we we have we have fewer competitive or regular dancers than we have than like one neighborhood in la does for hip-hop yeah um so it feels like you're trying to out your cousin or your brother or you know your mom or dad sometimes um so yeah it's it's an important conversation we need to get into it at some point and i would like to do it sooner rather than later um, I have people in mind who I would really love to be on here to talk about that. Uh, and if you have something you would like to add to it, people who are watching, I highly recommend you message me. I want your voice. I'm sick and tired, like to get on a little bit of a soapbox. Um, I'm sick and tired of having these big questions and issues be such taboos. Uh, because things will never get fixed if we don't talk about it. And I'm not saying go and, like, if you think you know about someone who has done something, go and out them. Don't do that yet. We, like, I'm just saying I want to hear your voice. I want to hear how much of an issue this kind of shit really is in our community. I want to be educated. Um, and then yeah, we can sure. we can kind of go from there. But, um, mm -hmm. yeah, there's so many pieces to unpack and to bring also educate and empower. I completely agree. Um well, and, and Joel says that's one where you should probably have a female on, too, to get a woman's perspective. Absolutely. Uh, but, Joel, this I 100% agree with Joel, and then I, I want to remind you, this shit doesn't just happen to, to women in this crowd. And I'm speaking from personal experience, and that's as much as I'm going to say on it. This is a very serious issue we need to get into at some point. Uh, very soon, hopefully. Do we, um, kind of on that note, want to open it up for if anybody has like questions or anything that they want, like I a rapid love... fire? Yeah, let's do that. Answer to? Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, until then, like we're kind of talking about aspects in the community and you've, you've mentioned solo dancing a couple of times. So I'm just wondering, is there anything that happens regularly in the solo dance community that oh. you would like to see brought into the West Coast community? Yeah, 100%. Um, more celebration, uh, between like, I mean, you and me, we talk about this all the time and we critique each other's dancing and, and all that. But like, whenever we do a cool thing, I hear your voice off the, off the floor or like I scream at you. Like sure. that makes me so happy 
It's mm-hmm. it's so and actually Kevin like Kevin sorry I you're the person that reminded me about this so uh, and, and and kind of along those same lines is having more jams like and I don't mean mm. like big old jam circles or whatever but just like look what I'm doing look how cool this is with my partner I'm like and you know still paying attention to your partner obviously uh, but just more a little more adrenaline, a little more uh, freedom of creativity and celebration, I think, is is, is what I need. Um, because I'm sick of seeing the same shit in a competition, and I'm sick of seeing the same pandering, like, uh, charade mentality behind our dancing. You know, it's not everybody is funny. Not everybody is an a- like an athlete. Not everybody is creative in that specific way. So we need to figure out what we're good at and have people freak out about it basically to reaffirm what we're good at. And you'll never know if you don't share it with each other. If you just assume like, I know this next part of the song talks about boobies. I'm going to do something about that. Sure. Yeah. And, and like, how do you do musicality is probably a whole other episode. And I don't pretend to be an expert on it. Um, Why not? You have but, things you do. It's not. It's yeah, not I, I have things I do, but I, you know. So, and I'm, I'm getting a lot of expression love, which I appreciate. Yeah. I have a notoriously loud face. Um, if I'm sitting up for a spotlight, if I'm fortunate <laughs> yeah. enough to make a final, uh, please, like, I try to do this when I'm doing it. Um, but uh, yeah, I tend to have a loud face. Uh, often it is extremely supportive, and I try it to be. Occasionally, I have a loud face when things go a little Whoa. sideways in a dance as well. Um, that was weird. Sorry. <laughs> is my stream working okay? It looks You're a little fine. choppy. You're uh, fine. A notification popped up. You'll see it in a second. Go continue. I'm, I'm sorry. All right. Yeah. Oh yeah. There's the Adobe stock pop up. I like it. <laughs> um, so, and you can still hear me, okay? Right. Yeah. Yeah. You're good. Great. Um, so with regards to the musicality question, uh, big topic, we should do a whole thing on it at some point. Yeah, um, sure. So there was a great dance that happened recently with uh, Hugo and Cameo yeah, at Magic. Yeah. If, if you haven't watched that dance, watch that dance. You're also one of like eight people. So, you know, but um, there is this great moment in the very, very beginning of the dance where uh, and there are two moments where there's like a direct sort of charade shout out. The first is Falling Leaves, where in the beginning of the dance, Hugo goes up here, he drops the leaves, then he catches them later. And then the second one is in their second song when he does Kiss to Stranger and he actually like hunts for a kiss in the audience, which is great. Uh, um, but for me, both of those, even those two movements were interpreted musically, uh-huh. right? It's not like he stopped and, you know, smacked her face because it said smack her face or something, or yeah. like grab something because it said grabbed or or brushed the shoulder because it said brush the shoulder. It's about how do you interpret lyrics or music in a musical fashion through your technique, right? Not just through like interrupting the dance to play charades for a moment. And for me, like that's kind of how you can work that in in a more organic way. Um, And I think there are dancers that are really good at that. I think that uh, Sean's really good at that. I think Hugo's really good at that. Uh, Brandy's really good at that. Um, Where you do musical interpretation while still having it be dancerly. Like, I think that the snap moment, again, with Hugo at Orama, where Brandy and Hugo were dancing to the Prince song, um, and there's that one moment where it snaps, and she just, like, power stance and snaps with it, I thought was great, because it was a musical, dancerly moment that also interpreted the music. And so, you know, I think that that's ideally the way that we want to do that. Yeah. And, I mean, it's just if you can. And if you can't, who cares? Like if, yeah. who am I thinking of? There's a dancer that I really like. Uh, I'm, uh, I can't remember. The the point is, is just they're they don't ever go for the joke. And I remember sure. watching him some years back. Oh, it was John Kirkconnell. Like sure. John's funny as hell. He's like one of the funniest people I know. But like most of the time when I watch him dance, he, oh, he was doing um, Love Stoned. I think the very first time I saw him, and he skipped over what everyone else had made jokes about during the weekend and just like slayed it with random musicality. I was like, well, there you go. I don't, there's no need for you to try to be funny when you were just busy whipping everyone's ass. Cool. You know, he's just played to his strengths. Does anybody else have anything to say? Cause we are basically out of time. Awesome. Okay. 
<laughs> so again, um, you all know my host, Forrest Hansen. Uh, he is uh, incredible at everything, including but not limited to uh, writing books. <laughs> Uh, you can, again, buy Resilient, How to Grow an Unshakable Core of Calm, Strength, and Happiness. Uh, there's a link up top. Um, thank you so much for everybody being here. Uh, thank you, Rose City Swing, for being our hey. first sponsor. Hey! Um, first semi-official sponsor. Semi-official, off the Broadway, yeah. And uh, thank you so much, buddy, for being here. You're the best. I always Super value your opinion. Um, yeah, Likewise. If there's something that you guys want to hear, if there's some, if you are interested in actually being on the show, uh, I'm not going to accept everyone, but um, if we have ever had a conversation in real life, uh, perhaps we can get you on here to share your opinions uh, and your experience and that sort of thing. Shanti expected a message from me, <laughs> um, but aside from that, uh, that's it for today, guys. Thank you so much. This has been West Coast, West Coast Live. Uh, I'm Andrew. This is Forrest Hansen. Go have the best day that you've ever had, and we'll see you again.